So here's the file, and I've had to add in some print statements just to stop it crashing uh, and having any syntax errors when it's running because we can't have these uh, functions and procedures set up with no code. So what you can do when you're finished is just delete these. So what we're going to start with is getting the main part of the program working. That is that the program terminates when the user enters uh, their choice as number three. So looking at the very bottom of the code, first command, set user choice to zero. So we want to have a variable, which is an integer, integer type, set to zero so that our loop will actually begin. And we want to always have a program running when the user enters a choice, which is not three and not forgetting your semicolon. And each time a program iterates, we want to display the menu. Now, we are going to have a function for the menu. If we look at our code for the menu, which is at the top, you'll see that it has a return parameter, a return value. So different from how we call our other options, we have to say user choice equals the menu function call because the menu returns a value just like many of the other procedures and functions we've worked with before. So when we call that, the user would enter their data into the menu and it's passed as a parameter and stored in the value user choice and that saves us making a global variable. The next part is the part that chooses which piece of code to execute, so a selection statement. If the user choice is equal to one, then they are asking to display the leaderboard at that point, or st rather start the quiz. So if we look at what our functions and procedures are called, it's called start quiz. So you can just simply call start quiz, and you can see that's different from here, because the start quiz is a procedure it's got no return value, so we don't have to have something equals. Now that would work right now if we ran it, so let's run it and uh, see what's actually happening. Now we can see here that my program is just constantly running. It is never going to end. It is stuck in an infinite loop. And that is because the um, program is never asking the user to enter the choice again. So even if we complete the rest of the parts, which is to check if the user choice equals option two, then they wish to display the leaderboard at that point. So we can call our function to display the leaderboard, which we just check the name of it, which is display leaderboard. And again, it is display leaderboard. It is a procedure because it's just going to carry on, there's no need for it to be passed any data either, so there's no parameters being passed in or out. There's no return value. So if it's choice one, we start the quiz. If it's choice two, we display a leaderboard. Otherwise, we are going to quit the program, so we can say else, and we have to display a thank you message, so we can say print, thank you, using my program. And then we can actually use the quit function, which is actually not necessary, um, as it will end anyway once this loop terminates. So the minute the input three, this while loop would stop executing. And then as there's no more code after the while loop, then it will um, terminate the program. So if we run it again, it's still going to be stuck in this infinite loop. Um, well, not necessarily, it's in the loop. But because the, the user choice is not one or two, it's automatically executing this else. So it's going straight to the quit option. So what we need to do now is implement the, the function for menu. So if we can scroll up and look at that, you'll see that it's fairly short. So whenever the user calls the menu, it should be printing call menu. Now, if we look 
at our function uh, at the procedure, um, you can see that it's printing out call menu because it has to be executed. Um, you can see in the loop that every time the loop executes, it does actually call this function. You're just not being presented with a chance to enter a different value other than zero. So let's start coding that. And because we know it's calling it properly, I'm just going to comment out that line. You could delete it if you wish. I'm just going to leave it for testing. So we need a local variable that's going to keep track of the user choice. So user choice uh, equals, I'll just set to zero because that'll be invalid. And uh, our program, just so that um, it looks good, and to just to print our welcome message. So welcome to the software challenge program. And now we want to display the different option choices to the user. So I'm going to print um, some blank lines here. So a backslash n will print a new line. And then I'm just going to put a tab as well, just so it's indented from the side to look a little bit better. So enter choice one to start the quiz. And print the second one. And again, similarly, I'm going to print on a new line. Or sorry, I don't need to print a new line rather but I will put the T to indent along and enter choice two to display reader board and print same again, uh, backslash T for tab, enter three to quit. And I'm going to head, uh, go ahead and put in a backslash N for a new line so that when we do the input part afterwards, it displays. So a quick run of the program just to check how it looks. So you can see that my menu appears indented, so it just looks a little bit better. You can see obviously it's not complete yet because it's going straight to the quit option because the choice is neither 0, 1, or sorry, it's not 1, 2, or 3. So you can see in actual fact any input terminates our program if it's not one and two. So the part that's going to change all that is the next piece of code. I want to get an integer from the user to store in user choice. So user choice equals integer input. Please enter your choice. Now we're going to go ahead and validate that. So we want to not be less than one or you don't want the user choice to be bigger than three. If it is, I'm going to go ahead and take a little shortcut, copy the question, and it inside the loop, and just change the message a little bit and say invalid. Please enter your choice, one, two, three only. Now, the last part that we must include, and we better dedent because we don't want it returning inside the loop, is to return the user choice. And the reason for the return values, remember we said it's a function. So the, the user choice is a local variable. So the scope of it is that it only exists within the menu procedure or function rather. So in order for our main program area to find it out, it has to be passed out as a parameter back here as user choice. So now, if we run the program again, we're being prompted to enter a choice. So if I try five, it's invalid. So it tells it's invalid and enter one to three only. If we press one to start the quiz, you can see that start quiz print is called, which is perfect. That's what we want so far. If we test two to display the leaderboard, you can see that it displays the leaderboard part, which is just a print comment and it's printing the headers of the, the table that we're going to display, which code was included. And you can see that the loops uh, continue to execute. So if we try now to enter in choice 55, it's going to be invalid. And that loop will continue to ask us until we enter one, two, or three. So let's test that three displays the thank you message and stops the program. And you can see it does. Thank you for using my program. And now it wants us to kill it.
So go ahead and get that part working before moving on to the 